Now this is the north view from the property and we're near the corner. When you go down, you'll see that white stake down there. Uh, that's the northeast corner of the property. Now, this is the road that goes on the east side and a lot of the drainage of the water will hit up against that and then goes down to our sand pond that we're creating to store a bunch of the monsoon water. And that's, you know, I mean, if I focused on it, you know, it could be done in a year, but it's a multi-year project and you need to because you got to understand exactly how the water works here. And uh, I think I got it down. You know, we get a nice little flood and I can see what's up. Now, what we've done here, these are a, a bunch of pallets that I got when uh, we went to the auction last year, getting a lot of stuff. And they were very handy dandy in us putting a lot of stuff, storing on and covering them with tarps and getting them up off, off the ground. But now with the storage container and so on, we can start getting a lot of stuff in and we can use these for other things. Now, this IBC tote, um, what I like about it is that it's on a pallet that I could put it on the forklift on the tractor. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out, you know, one of the ends of this and take this actual tank and put it in another cage. But I like this cage for this. We'll use it for something else. But the reason is, is that you can make a man lift out of it. I, you know, pick it up with a forklift. You can stand in there and get high inside and working on the dome and so on. And we have the opening to one of the workshop domes where the tractor can actually fit in it. So that's going to make a, a, a lot of things easier. And some of these pallets are, you know, solid and that makes it easier for other things. You know, this aluminum tubing, I got like another hundred of these for doing all kinds of stuff. We're going to be putting up posts, you know, for putting up triangles you know shade cloths that we have and this and we used them here to make this solar rack you know so this worked out really well so we have um only four panels that we were using for a long time and then we added another four uh for the bus but it's uh power is not a thing i mean if you got enough storage and the cost of Lithium iron phosphate batteries and everything now has gone down. Now we had a charge controller fire that um, just the wrong size of had too much power on another four panels that we have, you know, up near there. So that kind of changed where we're going to be doing the fact that you can have a fire and then a little fire turns into another fire of a fire. It's a thing. So we wanted to make sure that we did it in such a way that the, uh, power utilities are separate from living areas just out of precaution for a lifetime if I don't got to worry about it. Now this is the control panel that I used to have on my studio at our home and I wanted out of principle I wanted to see if I could uh, power my studio and it just be totally off grid and separate from anything just you know get to learn about it and um, what these switches are is uh, this on the right here. This cutoff switch was just for us to be able to be on grid or off grid, on grid, off grid. And we just flipped the switch and it was totally off grid. We could run generator, did solar and so on. So this is already set up. I took this and this is probably going to be for uh, the workshop area. Now, these are earth bags or hyper adobe bags, and they're just bags. You can see here that it's just a open tube and uh, you just fill it with dirt and um, tamp them down. And that is you can build and we had 10 of them here's nine we've only used probably not even half of one of the uh, first rolls to do some of the check dams to start uh, uh, you know quite a bit of the uh, foundation the footer for the next dome that we're working on now but you can see we could build multiple houses now this stuff uh, we put it in the shade here but that's one reason why I liked it is that it's not polyethylene, the white stuff and so on that degrades in the UV very fast. Within a month or so, it starts degrading. This stuff can sit out for years, three, four years, and you can just keep building with it. And you just stuff in wet dirt and make adobe or you do what's called structured adobe and you add uh, Portland cement to that. And it makes it a lot more durable so that it doesn't uh, dissolve when it gets wet. Now, the... 
one thing that we're doing is that we uh, just made like cement. It was just sand and gravel and a little bit of Portland and um, uh, maybe a little bit of clay. But we put it in there and it's just concrete. You know, so with concrete footers, it's, you know, it's not going anywhere. Now, these control uh, combiner boxes here is how we, you know, we have off switches that we can turn off the panels when we're working on stuff so we don't die. Because you're d dealing with very high um, power demands and you know you can just you know turn off the off switch that's a um, lightning arrestor there and then you got breakers and combiners and so on so this is a you know necessary for uh, safety and to make sure that you can uh, turn off the power if you're working on something because a DC powered uh, super volt you know coming out a couple hundred volts and you're dead so you got to be very careful with that fyi now this we've had you know for you we got a couple of these they are um hot water heaters and they're really made for horse stalls you know for like hosing down your horses or whatever and them not being cold but um uh for camping or whatever you just hook up a uh, five gallon propane and you got hot water wherever you want now this was an outdoor shower that donna she really likes the outdoor shower we started disassembling a lot of stuff um cleaning it up and organizing the play putting it in the storage to kind of you know get to the next phase of the build here now this is a, a water uh trough for um horses or cows and the cows are lower and the horses are high. Now, this is part of an aquaponic system that we had that we still have the pieces for. And we may do that later when we get to that stage. Now, these are just donated extra solar panels that were a um, uh, business that was moving, doing something. My son had access to just got me a bunch. So these are panels that I'm going to be using for the... Uh, shipping container workshop over there for powering that and uh so we got panels enough for doing that and then um this is for a septic leach field line now we already installed our uh, septic over by the bus and we didn't um double it out because we we're doing an experiment we wanted to try it for a couple of years and see how it works we'll dig it back up and evaluate it and look at what is really needed because we really don't use that much water so that's what just back here by the solar panel now this is a lot it generate these are 535 watt bifacial kick butt you know panels and um and then you know the grounding rod that goes down in and so on now we did have the solar lines going to the bus buried and i had to undo them because i was checking different things we thought we had a short and kind of you know so those would get buried back again now this is our trash you know donna just puts all the cardboard boxes and everything in the winter we burn them you know, there's a lot of this just gets burnt, but uh, we have our big dump trailer and she's about due to fill it up. And then she takes it to a landfill that is probably about 35 miles away and they just let you dump it, you know, so good with that. Now, we did have a lot of stuff underneath here that we're starting to organize and and get in the storage. Now, we're going to be doing uh, a lot of shading on the various work areas and everything. And that's what these are. They're just big 20 by 20 by 20 or, you know, 12 by 12 by 14 or something triangle pieces that a friend of mine uh, started using them for shade and they work awesome. And I thought they'd be a lot more expensive. Even these big ones are only like $40 or something. So for a hundred bucks, you know, different sizes, you can really improve your life. Now the pool, has been here for god a couple of months and it really takes care of itself it doesn't take a whole lot of chemicals you know donna takes care of it she has to you know put a ibc tote full of water in it every week or so but uh it's really nice and but now it's it oh this seems kind of cool usually it's hot i mean it's like minimum 85 degrees to almost 90 i mean you know it's like taking a bath you know donna really likes that but uh you know i just come out and you know we have uh you know her homemade soap and uh i just take a 
cup and pour it over me and uh, take a bath, rinse off, and then just soak in the pool kind of like a Japanese bath. Now these here, I'll show these, they're called Oopies, and I think I bought these for $135 each. They only, they have, I think like 600 watts of power and they put out like uh, 600 watts, you know, and they're less than a kilowatt of storage, but they run just about everything, you know, except you, when you start getting up into 1500 watts uh, for um, heavy drills or big pumps or run, but little pumps and, you know, hand drills and, you know, circular saws that you still have as AC. We can just carry these around. Well, it charges the battery for our dump trailer. I just plug in, normally you plug it into a household um, outlet to charge the battery. I guess it's got marine battery in there, 12 volt lead acid. But uh, we just put this in, plug it in, and I've never had to plug in the uh, dump trailer, you know, so it does really well. And, and I, I like having these, we have the EcoFlow Delta 2, I think it is, that's 1500 watts, that'll pump out about 1800 watts, so you can do a lot bigger stuff. Now, I just took a old barrel that was out here in the desert I found, and uh, cut it down, put some holes in the bottom, and that works really well. Of course, it's too hot to be having fires now, but normally we just, you know, burn all the cardboard and everything in here. And then just from cleaning up uh, the trees and the ironwood and mesquite and whatever uh, out here in the desert, the branches off like those trees and so on, you know, we'll take this and do a pile and uh, that's been our firewood. Now, we had um, a covering over this, but the wind out here is so much, it just blows it off. And the UV just beats the crap out of any of this line. What we're going to start doing is you get this cheap chain link, fence, uh, uh, chain link, you know, it's just like dog chains or something you can get it at uh, tractor supply, the small gauge chains. And I'm thinking we're just going to go everything chain. Even though it may be a little bit more money, you know, now it, the UV just kicks the living crap out of everything. That is the one thing here in Arizona. You need to get stuff under shade, just the damage that it does on tires, on anything plastic, on tarps, everything. It'll just kick the crap out of it. Now, this is a mixer that we have uh, just as backup for when we have areas that we can't get to for different backup of, you know, we're doing stuff. Now this is the um, expansion foam, you know, for uh, us doing the cement floor and so on. Now we haven't used this, but we like having it around, like when the tractor's gone now, and we have to have something, we'll do that. Now what Donna is doing over here is how our water system works. Now we have the septic that we buried tanks here and the leach field goes out towards the uh, solar panels. So we have, yeah, you can hardly see the screen. So we have, uh, you know, down below there, well, that's what she's doing. So we get to watch. So she puts the um, septic hose outlet thing, you know, built in there. Yeah, make sure it's done or we get crap everywhere. And then uh, the gray and black tanks over there and she's opening them. Need help? That's all good. So then it starts, there it goes. So how often do you empty the tanks? Uh, about every two weeks, two and a half weeks. A lot of the, like the laundry water, the when we do the washer uh, loads, I just run it outside to the foliage. Um, so that kind of cuts down on a lot of it, because that does take a lot of water. So I'd say, and a lot of the times we just take outdoor showers anyway, so we're not really running a lot of water inside. So right now about every two weeks, two, three weeks. Yeah, it's 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 nice out here and it cools you off and it's just- The nights are really nice. It's, it's nicer outside at night than it is in the bus. 
so a lot of times we spend it outside. Yeah, I was really dreading this summer after last summer, you know, out here by myself and we didn't have the air conditioner and we didn't have, you know, uh, did we have the evap? I think we had the evap. We had the evaporative cooler, yeah. You know, but it is just getting, oh man. So this is um, a water tank that she put a black covering on so it doesn't grow anything. And then this, you know, Harbor Freight pump, man, has been working great. This thing, you know, will empty one of these tanks and how long well, there, there's well it'll empty maybe in about 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes this is like a three quarter horsepower and it's pretty fast the only reason i don't like using it is it's really bulky and really heavy you got to prime it every time and sometimes it, it'll work and sometimes it won't priming it so you have to keep doing it and then this one we got it's a battery powered one and i really like it because it's very light it can you can plug it in or it runs on a on a battery the bower batteries that we already have and you don't have to prime it. It just you turn it on and it goes. And the only problem with that is that it it you can't run it long term, like you know, for 20 minutes, like we do with these bigger pumps. Uh, it'll just get too hot and it'll shut off, and then we have to wait till it cools. So it'll do probably five minutes or something. So we're just kind of new with that one. But I like this one. Then we have another smaller one we use sometimes, but it'll take a longer time to get it into the bus. Anyway, so we're experimenting with all these different... Systems. Yeah, the Luler pump works on those little OOPI um, yeah. battery packs, so that's yeah, convenient. That but the, the fact that um, we didn't have water down to the uh, shipping container over there, and I needed to get a tank over, and I didn't have the... Um, a hitch. I was missing a hitch that I needed to be able to take the big water tank here over there, whatever. So I used that little oopy and that little pump and a five gallon buckets I put in the bucket of the trail of the tractor and took over there and and it freaking worked. You know, so it's just you know, you make do, but we're finding out, you know, what it is that we need.